Sports School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. We're here with Fred Bellore from the University of Illinois. And Fred, we've just looked at your seven uh, keys to yield, the seven wonders of yield. I want to talk about one in particular, and that is fertility. You know, you talked about, you know, optimizing fertility is the key to making this whole system work. Yeah, if you think about it, fertility is, uh, acts right from the very beginning, and it sort of sets the foundation uh, for high crop yield. Um, and, and uh, you know, especially when we talked about planting more plants, oh, it's really important to have those nutrients available to, to feed each one of those plants. Now, you did a little bit of uh, some experiments, and you came up with a harvest index, and I guess the impact on, of different nutrients um, on, for example, a 230 bushel yield crop, and you had nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, and zinc as the keys. Yeah, what we did is we, uh, we actually measured the, the nutrient accumulation over time for some of the, the main macro and micronutrients for crops that yielded to uh, 230 bushels. And you know, we, we, what we noticed is that uh, not all nutrients are acquired at the same time. They're not all used in the same way. And that some nutrients have a high grain requirement or a high harvest index. And this means that not only is a, a large percentage of the nutrient that that crop absorbs removed with the grain, but it means that uh, management strategies that make sure that a nutrient is available during grain fill, uh, we think are important to achieve high corn yields. And there was four nutrients that sort of fit into the, the, the high grain requirement, high harvest index strategy. Those were nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, and the micronutrient zinc. If you look at uh, phosphorus, sulfur, and zinc, we, we saw that more than half of the, the amount of those elements that that crop needs are absorbed by the crop after flowering. And this means that uh, strategies to make sure that uh, those elements are available after flowering, where the roots are, we think this can play a, a pretty important role in achieving high corn yields. And you also talked about you know, the need, of, again, following up on that, Fred, to feed the plant, not the soil. Yeah, the, old, uh, the soil test approach is to feed the soil. You know, we viewed it as money in the bank. We could build our soil tests up, and then we could uh, you know, then add only what the crop removed. And, you know, if you're blessed with a high soil test, you, didn't, you allegedly didn't need to put those nutrients out. I, uh, I challenge growers to think about whether the soil tests were calibrated to today's yield potential, especially for, for immobile nutrients like phosphate or micronutrients. I, I've seen situations where what would be viewed as an adequate soil test, we still get a yield responses from adding uh, phosphate or, or sulfur fertilizers. And I think it, I think it means that uh, you know, when, we're, when we're producing yields that are 250 bushels or more, we have plant populations in the 40,000 range, I think it means that sometimes the soil test can't indicate that uh, the, the, the need that, that those plants actually have or release those nutrients fast enough. So. Well, uh, we want to take a feed the plant approach. We want to feed the plant what it needs, when it needs it. We want to make use of all the technologies available. Now with auto steer technology, we can put nutrients right exactly where the plant row is going to be. There are an awful lot of fertilizer products that uh, also supply more than one key nutrient or have aspects associated with them that make sure those nutrients are available longer. So technology is the key to feed the plant what it needs. Final question, let's talk about, I guess, nitrogen and, and application strategies. Um, when, um, split applications, those type of things, you like spring banding. Yeah, I did spring banding is, is, uh, because uh, then, then, then I, I, I band the nutrients in a concentrated zone, four to six inches deep, I get those roots right into that nutrient off the bat, I see large increases in uh, early growth, and the, uh, the best thing I see is very few plants left behind. That plant that, uh, that, that slows its growth early on, that becomes a weed later on. It really doesn't add to the potential, uh, yield potential that, that it has. So we've been, we've been doing banding as a way to make sure that the nutrients are incorporated. Well, we ultimately think that uh, by, by concentrating them where we're going to put the root, we can have them available longer into the growing season. And then maybe we can actually get by with a little less nutrient if we only fertilize where the root's going to be rather than the whole soil. Well, some great insights today, sir. Thank you. Pleasure.